It's time for ROTD Weekend. You might remember back in August, I was talking about how I understand how and why my kids don't do things that they know they should do that will make their lives easier and they put them off and they don't do them and they know better and that I am forgiving of this because I do the same thing. And what I told you back then was that the examples of where I do that same thing are two things. One is I know every day that if I want to exercise, I need to do it first thing thing. Otherwise, my day gets out of control and suddenly I'm running out the door with my keys in my hand to go pick up my kids from school and it is over. And so I said that to you. I also said that the other thing I know that if I do, that my life will be easier is that if I go to the grocery store, if I do my meal planning and go to the grocery store on the weekend, my week will be so much easier as opposed to what often happens is I don't do that. And then Monday comes and not only do I not feel fit in that exercise, but I am running out the door with my keys in my hand to go to the grocery store before rushing to pick up my kids from school. So I told you all of that, and I didn't say it because I was planning to change anything. I was just giving it as an example of things that I know better, and I know that if I just did it differently, my life would be easier, but I don't do it. And so I understand when my kids are in that same position. But the weird thing that happened is that, and I've told you about this before, but I'm kind of giving you an update. The weird thing that happened was having said that out loud to you, like having thought it through and then thought about what I was going to say on the show and then saying it to you made me change what I was doing. And literally, I started exercising in the morning, I would say like not every day, but like weekdays four to five and often on the weekend at least once. So like huge improvement in terms of the meal planning and grocery shopping on the weekend. That is still a little bit tricky because I'm often doing cooking for for my websites and stuff. But like in general, like jotting down a meal plan and making sure I have the basics for it on the weekend, I've been doing that too. And not, again, not because I said to you, I need to change this. Just like saying it out loud made me really, really realize it. And so I was thinking that I might use this power to try something else. If it is the case that if I say something to you that I know I should change, that I know I should be conscious of and do differently in my life, if I say that out loud to you and that actually makes me end up doing it, then that is a superpower and I could use it for good and to do other things in my life, right? And so here I am right at the beginning of December and I'm a little bit stressed out, overwhelmed. I have a lot to to do. And there's some part in the back of my mind that's like, it's going to be okay. You're going to get it done. You don't have to worry. If it doesn't get done, there's nothing that important other than, of course, recording these podcast episodes for you. I know you look forward to those. But like, there isn't anything that is like, must get done. The kids will have presents. There will be Christmas food. It's all going to be fine. My Christmas lights are already up. I mean, it's going to be okay. I don't have to stress out about it. So maybe given that exercise in the morning, please planning, food, grocery shopping on the weekend, maybe in the spirit of that, if I just say, hey, I understand why I'm overwhelmed. I understand why I'm stressed out. I understand why you're overwhelmed and I understand why you're stressed out. And I also know and you know that it is all going to get done. Maybe that will make me less stressed out. Maybe that will make me relax into it because I have said it to you. So that's what I'm thinking. New superpower. I say to you that I understand why I'm feeling this way. I understand why you're feeling this way, but also that I know it's going to be okay. And maybe it just will be, right? I think it totally will. I actually feel more relaxed already and very excited to tell you about today's guest. We have Amy Lawrence from GourmetDoneSkinny.com. She is also the author of The Power of Food Prep, and she's here to tell us a little bit about food prep, healthy eating, what's going on in her culinary world, and also to share a very special and delicious secret recipe of the day with us. Of course, you already probably know what her recipe is because it is in the title of the episode. I have just realized that this does not make it very secret if I'm telling you up front what it is, but it is secret to me. I do not know before the conversation with 
with my guest what recipe they are bringing to tell me about. And I think that's so fun. So it is surprise recipe of the day to me, if not to you. But if you haven't read the title of the show, then it will be a surprise to you as well. And so let us listen to Amy Lawrence from Gourmet Dunskinny and find out what her secret recipe of the day is, if you don't already know. Either way, she's going to tell us how to make it. And then we're all going to learn something and hear something delicious. Amy, welcome back. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. Well, I'm excited to be here with you because I know you are a food prep expert. We're in the beginning of December and I need to know, have you started prepping for Christmas already? (laughs) Oh, yes. Truth (sighs) be told, I actually started back in October, but you can start now. It's not too late. It's never, it's really never too late to food prep. It really isn't. And I'm not really prepping for the big day. I'm just prepping for all the, um, you know, all the days around it when you don't feel like cooking something because you're, you know, shopping and out doing other stuff and fun stuff. Oh, so. So, okay. So you're not prepping for like Christmas Eve, Christmas dinner. Nope. You're prepping a bunch of meals for all around there. Yep. So like regular things or are you, have you got like baked breeze in the freezer ready to go? Like what kinds <laughs> of things have you got? I don't have baked breeze in the freezer. I do have frozen uh, pastry dough in the freezer, though, because I like to have that on hand. So when I want to do it, but I have things like meatballs, like you could pull out for quick little appetizers. I've Mm got, you know, special egg rolls that I can pull out. I always do like I make a double batch of cookies, a whole bunch of different kinds of cookies. I don't bake them, but I just, you know, scoop them out and flash freeze them and then vacuum seal them. And then whenever we need a little treat, we just pull out, you know, six or eight or whoever, you know, if we got a big crowd, we'll pull out more and then bake them up in the toaster oven. So little things like that. Meatloaves, little tiny meatloaves. Because you never know, you know, you're out shopping and or you're out doing an event and you come back and you don't, you know, the restaurants are really crowded right now anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice to be able to pull out dinner and have it ready in, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. So yes. I love that. So, okay. Okay. So you're prepping for all around. When would you start actually doing your like Christmas dinner prep? It depends. You know, like I haven't even figured out what I'm making yet. I kind of am more of a spur of the moment kind of person, but we tend to make, um, I tend to like to make like little mini beef Wellingtons for Christmas. Mm. So I would probably like, I like to do the steaks ahead of time and I probably would do that. Well, at least have the steak done at least a week ahead and have that in the freezer. Or I'd have the pastry dough done in the freezer and I might put it to, together like the day before and mm-hmm. then and then do it the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it just kind of depends on what I'm making, but I don't have but I'll have like, you know, like cookies and all that other stuff I can throw together. I always have I have this wonderful mandarin rice salad that I like to use for um, for Thanksgiving. Also, I like to use it for the holidays. But you can like have the rice already pre-cooked and have that in the freezer and you can mm-hmm. just pull it all together with some fresh, you know, lettuce and spinach and everything, mandarin oranges and put it all together. So Oh, that uh, sounds tasty. Yeah. Is there a dressing on that? Yes, there is. It's it's a really yummy dressing. And um that one you could do actually, um, you know, you can make the dressing up. Well, really it lasts for about two weeks. I would probably make it up maybe a week ahead of time, just because mm-hmm. I like to be, you know, pretty fresh mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, there's lots of little things that you can do. Even just pre-prepping some things I like to have. Have cranberry scones in the freezer and then like Christmas morning we could bake it up. I made quiche this week actually and I um, cut it already and, and I flash froze it into individual pieces and I like to have that for Christmas morning. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do to, you know, so it makes it a lot easier, stress-free. So I know your meal prep technique is, I don't want to say different, but it is, it is a no, little it bit, is. it's yeah. different from what a lot of people do. If people want If they're listening and they're like, what is this flash freezing? What is going on? How is the easiest, best way for them to learn all about this from you? So, yeah, so they can go to my website, gourmetunskinny.com. And I have a post on there. If they would just type in the search bar food prep and it would come up and it talks about all about, you know, the food prep method that I have. I'm also doing a a free um, boot camp in January that they can sign up for. And you can find me on Gourmet Done Skinny Facebook group. You can check there. I also have a free private Facebook group that they can go to. And I do a lot of live cooking demos in there, but that's also Mm. a good way to find out about the boot camp. And also, if you sign up for my newsletter, definitely you'll you'll know about the boot camp. So, did you say the boot the boot camp is free? 
Yes, it's free. Okay, yep. five free, day boot camp. Yes. Five day free boot camp in January. Definitely, yes. if you're intrigued, it'll be towards the end, Got it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So that is amazing. Prepping for Christmas, getting a boot camp in January on meal prep. Did you bring me a surprise recipe of the day for today, Amy? I did. I'm so excited. This <laughs> is one of my very, too. very favorite recipes. And actually, if you're in the boot camp, you might actually see it because I, I love this recipe so much. Yeah, yeah. tell me. Go for it. I'm oh, ready. now I can tell you that. Okay. Yeah, like, I want so- like a drum roll sound effect. I think I need to get that. But yeah, okay. And I'm, I know like- you've probably made it before. Oh. However, I have a lot of twists on it. So it's... It's Instant Pot Kahlua Pig. Have I have made not before? made this. Instant oh, you have not? Pot. Oh, then you're even in for a surprise. It, it so sounds fun. incredible. Does it involve actual Kahlua? No, it does not. Oh. It's The Kahlua, it comes from Hawaii. It's oh. So it's not Kahlua the alcohol. It's Kahlua Hawaii. Uh, I'm like a little I, disappointed, but I'm okay. We can <laughs> Like, once oh. you try it, you'll be so excited. You'll be so excited. No, it is so fantastic. I've had the recipe for, I don't even remember. I don't even know where I got it. And I probably when I went to Hawaii the first time I had it there, they do it differently. They like bury the pig and smoke the pig oh. and everything. And um, obviously we, I don't do that, but it was a crock pot recipe a long time ago, but I moved, I adapted it for the Instapot mm. and it is like the easiest recipe you've ever made. It's so fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do it in the crock pot. So people are listening and don't have an Instapot. Pot, I'll give you some quick in- instructions on how to do yeah. it. Yeah. But it is, I mean, it is just, it's so tender. It's so moist. And it's, I mean, the reason why I like it is it makes a lot. So my recipe, I think, calls for like three pounds typically of, of mm-hmm. pork shoulder. However, because I'm a food prepper, I, you know, if you're going to do it once and it's going to be the same, you're going to cook it the same exact way, you might as well make more. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. usually do six or seven pounds at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And what I do is, so do you want me to tell you how to make it or do you want me to tell you what all you could do with it? Tell me how you make it and we'll see where we end up from there. Okay, so it's super easy. So mm-hmm. you get your Instapot and you push saute and you add just a little bit of oil to the pot. Not much, just a tiny bit. And then what I do is I cut the pork shoulder into about three or four pieces. Now, a pork shoulder has a lot of fat on it mm-hmm. and you want you don't want to use super lean pork for this recipe because that's what's so good about it. Mm-hmm. But you don't need all the fat. So if there's a fat cap on there or there's a big piece of fat, I always trim off the visible fat that I can get to. Mm-hmm. I don't do all the veins and all that, mm-hmm. but just the big the big amount of fat. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Hang on, I have a question. You yeah. said to cut it into three or four pieces. Would that be the three pounds or also like if it's six pounds, are you cutting them, yeah. it into six Seven pieces? Seven pounds or four. Yeah, whatever. However many you have. If you have a big Instapot, you can do, well, you can do more. If you have a six quart Instapot, you can pretty much do at least six pounds in there. And you would sure. cut the six pounds into how many pieces? Into like three or four pieces. Okay. So yeah. three or four pieces, no matter how yeah. big it is. Three or four pieces. Yeah. yeah. And then what you do is you sprinkle it with kosher salt. And then now there's two ways to do it. If you're just making a small, if you're just doing the three um, pounds, it's pretty easy to just brown it all in the Instapot. And Mm -hmm. so you just brown it on all sides. But if I'm doing like seven pounds, I like to just do it on the stove. Mm -hmm. I will actually do both. I do some in the Instapot and some on the stove. And that way it goes a lot faster because it takes a while to do it all in the Instapot. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I usually have two things going at the same time. Have you ever tried doing it under the broiler? Oh, you could. I never, no, I haven't. Yeah, I've done that before. Like it goes, you just get it all seasoned and a little bit Uh of oil on it and then stick it fairly close to the broiler and watch it carefully and then turn the pieces over as they brown. When I have a I really that. Easy. If I have a lot, yeah. if I have a lot yeah. and I don't want to be standing at the stove, I've done that. Yeah, really that's well. a fantastic idea. Thank you. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, okay. So you got your meat browned and everything. So then you turn off your Instapot and you throw your meat in and then you add, I just usually do like bacon crumbles. Costco has like those bacon bits and you know, those mm-hmm. bacon crumbles. I just sprinkle some of those in there. You don't have to, but I just like it. And it's and like then, already cooked bacon bits. Is already that cooked bacon. Yeah. yeah, yeah just yeah. sprinkle them in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then about, it depends. So if you're going to do the three pound pork, I would do about one tablespoon of liquid smoke. And then if not, if you're doing the seven pound or six pound, I would do two tablespoons of liquid smoke. And what I do is to make it easier, a lot of people will just like throw the liquid smoke in there. And then it like whatever piece of meat it hits is, you know, that means that's really potent. So what I do is 
all the Instapot recipes need at least half a cup of water. And so you do a half a cup of water and then I pour the liquid smoke into the water first Mm -hmm. and then mix it up and then pour that water into the um, Instapot. And then I usually add about mm, five cloves of garlic peeled. Um, Mm -hmm. And then also add, I usually add a couple of like garlic where I've minced it too. I like to have both. So Mm -hmm. you have both, you know, a little bit of flavor there and that's pretty much it. And then you put the lid on, put it to sealing. If you have one of those old Instapots, the new ones don't need that. And then you pressure cook it for about 70 minutes. And if it's the seven pounds and it's a kind of, sometimes it's a little bit on the frozen side of things, I'll do up to 120 minutes, depends on how cold the pork is. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then when it's done, you basically release it and then you just shred it all up and then it's, oh my gosh, great to go. And another little tip is you can take all the pork out. You could throw in some chopped cabbage Mm. and then put the lid back on and then just cook it for like two more minutes all in that pork juice. Mm -hmm. And that's really good just to have the pork and the cabbage together. Together. So that is my Elps ultimate, very favorite. You can food prep it so easily, let mm-hmm, it cool mm-hmm. a little bit. And then I pack it into one cup packages, freeze those up. And then I have a whole bunch of stuff that you can use with it. So that's my recipe. I love it. I want, I have lots of questions, but like one that is, I just, I don't even know. Did you say <laughs> the new Instant Pots don't need you to seal it? I'm like, yeah, I, I like should know this. I have <laughs> it, it well, I have so I have two. One has the button where it moves it over, uh-huh. like you have scent, sealing and venting. Yeah, yeah. And then I have I another have. one where you don't touch it. So yeah. it just knows you want it. It seal- must know because it's on because you push the you know you push oh. manual fresh, so it must know that you're going to do it. Yeah. So, so then, how do you do the difference between a natural release and a quick release? Oh, so that, I mean, it's still got the button that pops up. Uh So if you're doing natural release, you just wait until the button goes down. Mm. And actually on that pork, sometimes I'll let it natural release 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then there's a button to push. Uh, Oh, yeah, I guess that's what you're trying to ask. There's a button to push and then that'll release the pressure. Uh, Okay. Okay. I I now understand. Thank you. (laughs) I know that's not anything to do with your recipe, but I'm like, oh my God, they've changed the Instant Pot? (laughs) Yeah. Well, and that's been a little while ago because it's very interesting. So I had my old Instant Pot for a long time and people kept talking to me and saying, I keep getting a burn message. And I'm like, I never get a burn message. And so a couple years ago, I bought a new Instapot and that's the one that has the no, you don't have to turn the Mm -hmm. little seal. Mm -hmm. And you do get the burn message on the new Instapots uh, more often. And so it's just very interesting. So I've had to correct that a little bit. Why Do you know why it's, I I get it sometimes and I know how to not get it in mine, but what's going on there? I think it's too sensitive. I think Mm. the newer ones are too sensitive. So like anything that has cream cheese, you have to like cut up the cream cheese and put it on on top of whatever you're mm-hmm, doing because mm-hmm. you can't have it at the bottom. It'll burn. Beans sometimes will burn. I never got that message with the other one. The I only, still don't. The only time, uh, I mean, I don't now because I know better, but the only time that I did was, well, I guess two things. If I was doing like you were doing, browning the pork, and then right. I don't scrape up the bits really good. So oh, they're sometimes, still yeah, sometimes stuck on the bottom. So I'm yeah. really, really careful about that now. Like there is yeah. nothing stuck on the bottom of that Instant Pot when I start. Yeah. And then the other time was, of course, just in like recipe testing, recipe development stuff. I was playing mm-hmm. with what you could use instead of water as that like half cup or one cup of water. Right. Like, can you use tomato sauce? No, you can't. Yeah. No, because- you can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's too thick and it's gonna burn on the bottom so broth? i went yes broth's fine wine's yeah, fine yeah exactly it, it can't yeah. be i mean you can have it's tomato big. sauce but you need to really water it down like it right. can't yeah. be but yeah so there was lots of experimentation in the early days yeah. where i was like oh well okay that's not gonna work but yes. uh interesting that they get it more often so yeah. um it's kind of crazy actually and it's, i ended up having to do a whole thing about the burn message on my um blog because people kept getting the burn message we so. should link to that from the show notes and oh, okay. i guess if I'll, anybody I'll yeah. I, I always feel this like people are like afraid of the Instant Pots. if you don't have one and they you're are. hearing us please don't think that this is a reason to not get it but if you right. if you if you're wondering like why is this a big deal it's a big deal because when the burn notice happens it stops cooking your food right like the whole yeah. thing kind of shuts down. And so you're just like, what, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you know, you had a good point that I hadn't, I hadn't thought about, but um, I've, I'm doing actually an Instapot class um, in January, actually. I'm working on a four-part video series for Mm -hmm, that. So mm -hmm. might be something because I, and the the title of it is (laughs) scared to use the Instapot. Have you even opened the box? Because I find that that's such a big thing. You know, a lot of my members, they, they have one, they've never used it, you know. Oh my, we, have we talked about this before? Mine sat in the like front entryway of my house for over Uh a month. And my parents, they were snowbirding like an hour away. And every Uh time that they came over, my mom was like, 
the instant pot is still there and i'm like i i'm too i'm too i don't know what to do with it and so one day she finally took it out of the box and followed those first instructions and then showed me how to use it then i was like oh it's not hard at all i'm such an idiot (laughs) no but you know i think we think it's gonna blow up like our you know like the grandmother's you know i think that's the thing and and i'm a cook that likes to do everything the hard way like i like to cook things on the stove for three hours Mm -hmm. but oh my god i love that thing i love that and so i convert a lot of my recipes to instant pot because you know like this pork one because it's just it cooks it so fast and so tender and it's just great what what i really like like so i i'm similar to you i don't not necessarily on the stove but i tend to not gravitate towards like gadgets and things very often it's oven Mm -hmm. stove traditional but what i love about the instant pot and the air fryer for that matter is it gives me options like you know we were talking right. about your christmas food prep and like you're out shopping or you're at an event and you get home and you want right. to have if i have on my meal plan that we're doing i don't know a roast chicken or something and the day mm-hmm. went crazy i could put that chicken in the instant pot it's a different meal but so, right. the same food that i took out can become that meal right just in a different way it, you know yeah exactly it, it just get like you said it gives you options that's that's the best thing about it too mm-hmm. so. so speaking of options i know you want to tell me what do you do with this kalua pork once you have it okay so yeah this is why i'm so excited about it so the first day i make it you know it's hot and nice and moist and, and i shred it all up and we sometimes we'll have it with the cabbage because i'll put cabbage in there other times we'll do it as a rice bowl so i might grill some or not grill uh saute some veggies on the side so like you know some mushrooms some peppers whatever whatever sounds good asparagus whatever Mm. and then we'll do like a little pork bowl so Mm. it'll be like rice and then the pork and then maybe the cabbage and the veggies oh and then there's also a wonderful hoisin sauce that i make that's real easy to make that goes with this and you Mm. really have to make both you have to make the pork which you saw how or you heard how easy it is (laughs) and then you make the hoisin sauce and so that's the first night wait 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 i'm sorry you it's a homemade hoisin sauce it's homemade hoisin sauce. okay what is in the homemade hoisin sauce? okay i knew you're gonna ask me so i thought i'd better get my uh oh oh i'm gonna it. ask all the questions you know it i know it's so easy to make you can freeze it and it's just uh, you have to make the pork with the hoisin now, there's just no doubt about it well, so. i love hoisin but i've only ever used like store-bought bottled hoisin so oh, you're saying yeah, don't use that do this okay I'm yeah do this intrigued. and it really and especially if you have immersion blender it doesn't take long at all mm-hmm. so it's eight tablespoons well i make a big one so it's eight tablespoons of soy sauce because it's so good you're going to want to use it. Four tablespoons of peanut butter, two tablespoons of honey, four teaspoons of rice vinegar, two garlic cloves, four teaspoons of sesame oil. And then this part, you can do less. You need to put a little bit in though. Four teaspoons of sriracha sauce. You don't have to do a lot, but even if you don't like spice, you need a little bit. Otherwise it doesn't taste very much, mm-hmm, very well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't have that depth. Yeah, um, no, I, And then an eighth sense. of a teaspoon of black pepper. Oh. And so that is... That's all it is. And you just, you know, zip it up in that, in the immersion blender and keep it in the fridge. It'll thicken up like mm, within maybe an hour or so it'll thicken up. Mm -hmm. And then you can freeze it. I do freeze it in um, like, I, I like to really freeze it in more like bags. You can use like those two tablespoon super cubes, but mm-hmm. because it's got so much oil in it, it doesn't always like freeze solid. Mm-hmm. So I all just freeze the extra in bags. And so, then wait, uh-huh, so that was raw garlic and so raw you're garlic. not cooking this at all. You're just mixing it no, all together no, you just mix it up and then it. immersion yep. blender go. Yep. It'll last for about two weeks in the fridge. It, what'll happen is it'll separate. And so you'll just need to stir it before you use it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so what you do, so you have your rice, then you put your pork on there and mm-hmm. if you've got cabbage, your little veggies, and then you just drizzle. It is kind of high calorie, but you only need like a teaspoon of this mm-hmm, stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's really potent. It's great. And so you drizzle that on there. So that's the first night. We usually have that. Mm-hmm. Then the rest I pack away and it goes in the um, freezer. Well, it depends if we're really hungry, we might have it another night. But also what I like to do is, so you take a, a mixed greens. So put mixed greens in a little bowl, add some mushrooms, shredded carrots, some shredded cabbage, add the pork on that, drizzle mm-hmm. some of the hoisin sauce for dressing. So that takes care of your dressing. And so mm-hmm. that's another meal. Mm-hmm. Um, you could do lettuce wrap tacos mm-hmm. uh, or lettuce wraps. So mm-hmm. do lettuce wraps with the pork a little bit of rice and a little bit of hoisin sauce. That's another meal. One of my very favorite ones, and it's on my website, is the I have a hot caramelized onion um, Kahlua pig dip. Oh. So when I was in Hawaii, well, actually, every time we go, we always have it. But this one place in Alani, they have this pig dip. And so you use this pork, you save that pork in the freezer, and then you mix it with a little bit of white wine, rare mayonnaise, sour cream, 
and you mix it all. Oh, and sweet onions, you caramelize the onions and then you mix it all up and it makes a fantastic dip. It's mm. great for Christmas with like pita bread in there, dipped in there or naan is, is it, good in there. Is it a cold mm. dip or a hot dip? It's a hot dip. This hot one's a hot dip. dip. I love hot dips. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Although I like it cold too, but really, no, it's really a hot dip. So, um, mm-hmm. but that's mm-hmm. one of my very favorite things to make with it. And then the other thing I like to make is um, my Thai pork pizza. So you have a little, you know, you, I make my own pizza crust, but you can do whatever you want. But you do, you may have your pizza crust there, your raw, you know, dough. And then you drizzle the um, hoisin sauce as the sauce. That's the base. Oh. And then you decorate it with the pork and put some caramelized onions on there, shred some cabbage on there, a little mm-hmm. bit of cilantro, a mm-hmm. little, and then I like to shred um, fresh ginger over the top. Um, what else do I put in there? Is there the, cheese? A little jalapenos and then cheese and then mm-hmm. bacon. What kind of cheese do you use on that one? Mozzarella, but you know, actually Gruyere is really good too. Well, cause like the pig dip. Um, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those and cheddar. Are... Actually, all of it's pretty good. Doesn't really. matter. As long as yeah, it's it cheesy and melty, it's good. It's right? cheesy and yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I think those cheeses are better really than the mozzarella. I have mozzarella on the on the website, but I actually I don't use mozzarella that much. So yeah, I'd probably put cheddar on it. So. How smoky flavored is that pork in the end? It's not, it sounds like it might be a lot. It's not. If you're worried about the smoke though, I would cut it in half, uh-huh. but you don't want to miss, don't not put it in. I think you want to put it in for sure. I was just wondering if like something like smoked Gouda would work on that pizza or if it would be too smoky. Smoked Gouda had- would be fine, but you don't want to not put the liquid smoke in the, in uh-huh. the Instapot. For the oh pork. yeah, yeah. No, I'm just wondering if. Oh, you're just talking. Oh yeah. Smoked Gouda would be fantastic. I'm oh, worried. Yeah. That, like, would it be too smoky? But if the pork no, isn't no, 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 too, too no, smoky, no, no, then it would just no, be no, good no. like that. No, it just enhance it even better. So yeah. Well, these yeah. all sound like crazy delicious ideas. Um, I love, I love the recipe. I will instant pot and pork and, and there was bacon in there too. Like, I don't know. It can't go wrong. Right. Amy, if people want to see more of your recipes, get all the information about the boot camp, instant pot class, all of that, where is the best place for them to be finding you? Yeah. So check out gourmetunskinny.com. That's my website. That's my blog. I have the food prep membership. I'm working on a new website. Um, hopefully it'll be ready pretty quick and that'll be foodprepforfoodies.com. So that's coming up, but not quite there yet. And um, that's the best way. And then if you want to find me on Facebook, um, look up Gourmet Done Skinny. But join that private group because I'll be doing um, some live cooking demos and I'll mm. definitely be telling you all about the boot camp. So, that sounds fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. This has been fun. I wish we could cook together. I know. We need to figure fun. that out at some point. I would love to cook with you too. That would definitely. be so great. <laughs> Kalua pork, right? I do not know how I have not made this before or tried it before. I am super excited. Thank you, Amy, for sharing that with us. And I will put all the links that Amy was talking about in the show notes for this podcast episode. So if you want to know more about the boot camp, if you want to join that private Facebook group, get the cookbook, go to her website, gourmetunskinny.com. All of those links, everything will be in the show notes for this podcast episode. So you can find all of that out there. And of course, I'll also link to that Kalua pork recipe. As to what I am cooking this week, so actually... The amazing Jennifer, who helps me in the kitchen, is coming twice this week, and we have a ton planned. So we are working on a cowboy butter recipe. I had this at a restaurant a couple of weeks ago, and I am now obsessed. If you haven't tried it before, well, stay tuned for my recipe, because I've already tested a couple of things, and it is so good. It's basically like spicy, citrusy, herby butter that, you know, if you think about like cowboys sitting around the campfire at the end of a long day outside, they're going to just smear this on everything steaks, potatoes, cornbread, all of it. It is so delicious. So we're doing that. I also had a request from somebody recently who had had trouble making homemade butter from whipping cream, like from heavy cream. They thought it was supposed to be easier than it was. They ran into some trouble. And so I am going through some troubleshooting with that to make homemade butter out of heavy cream at home. And we are also planning a fajita marinade. So this is for either chicken or beef fajitas. And it is sort of going on that trend that I've been talking 
talking to you about, about my like brine slash marinade recipes where everything goes into the blender or food processor and gets all blended up raw garlic and onion and herbs and things. So we're doing something like that for these fajita strips. It's going to have like jalapenos, cilantro, lime, and then salt, of course, so that it really penetrates and makes it all taste so good. So we're working on that. And then we're shooting some videos for some recipes on the sites that are quite popular that don't already have videos for them. So these are things that people search for a lot on Google and end up on my site for. And I want to make sure that they can see what they're doing as well as just read about it. So that is we're doing one for the chicken wing marinade and for frying chicken wings, like deep frying them at home in just a pot. And we're also doing a cornstarch gravy video. And if I have time, I might tackle the baked ham. That just feels like quite the project to start doing a whole video for that. But it might happen this week. I have a lot of faith in how much Jennifer and I can get done. It's pretty crazy. If you like the videos that I make, I do post them on social media. All of them end up on there on TikTok, on Instagram, and on Facebook. You can find me at those three places by looking for Cook the Story, and you will find all the new videos coming out that I'm making to make delicious food easy and accessible for you. As to what is going live new on the sites, as I've told you before, we have slowed down just a little bit. And, you know, it's just a busy time of year for everybody, as I was talking about earlier. So we only have one new recipe going up this week. It is for Italian sausage pasta. It is delicious. You're going to love this one. It's really easy and just has everything. You know, it's got the sausage. It's got some vegetables, peppers, and some kale, diced tomatoes, and some beans, lots of flavor, a little bit of cheese. So satisfying, healthy, delicious, all of the things. So that is going live on Cook the Story this week. As to what you can look forward to on this show recipe of the day every single day. I have just some like easy, nice things to help us all get through this crazy month without like too much stress. So we're doing some air fryer baked eggs. There's some chicken burgers. There's a really, really nice Mexican ground beef skillet some air fryer turkey meatballs. I've told you about these. These are so easy and so good. You can just throw them together in a few minutes and they're in the air fryer. They cook super fast. I'm obsessed with them. Oh, and I have something special for you for the first day of Hanukkah on Friday. Lots of tasty things coming. I will put the links to everything that we've talked about today in the show notes for this podcast episode. And you can always learn more or find what you're missing if you head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would leave a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts. That's the best place to leave a review or just make sure you're subscribed wherever you listen to podcasts, wherever you're listening to right now, search for recipe of the day on your phone, subscribe. You will get a new episode every single day and two on Saturday. There's always so much good food to talk about, right? I am Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookable.com, the all new chicken cookbook and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Let's get cooking.